So the reason, Lee Forrest went for the EAL quality mark because we believe that we always go above and beyond for our EAL children and their families, providing them with a personalised and customised curriculum in order for them to give them the opportunities and the experiences to flourish in their journey of learning English and be able to choose a remarkable life. But we didn't always get the acknowledgement for this. So we actually went for the quality mark to gain the recognition that we provide a unique curriculum for our children. You know, you know, what we actually gained from acquiring the quality mark was the recognition that our curriculum that we deliver and support, we give has been identified to give our AI children and their families the opportunity to understand, develop, succeed, and also excel. Also the physical status that our certificate we hang proudly in the main entrance and the official logo on all our correspondences that we are a gold quality marked EAL school here to support and provide a unique education for our EAL children and new to English, as well as their family and friends. Thank you, that's lovely. One of the things that really struck me when I was there was that you have the, the full range of EAL pupils. Yeah. You have those who come to school not having been to school before and they're eight and they're not literate. You have new arrivals who are really successful learners in their own language and they know a bit of English. Yeah. And you have Birmingham born EAL learners yeah. who've still got gaps in yeah. their English, but their day to day yeah. English is fine. Mm. But you have the same high expectations of all of them. Yeah. But it's not a blanket, this is what you must all do. It's something that understands difference. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the things that really gets me. So how do you do how do you combine those high expectations with this understanding is... that actually they're they're just different things amongst these children too? It's just it's uh... So we actually combine that. So the panel was really impressed, you know, with uh, our provisions that we put into place. It combines the high expectations. Sorry, we're in the flight path of the aeroplanes. Can you hear the aeroplane going over? No, it's all right. That's all right then, yeah. So our, our, the provisions that we put into place actually combines the high expectations for all by understanding their differences. So, you know, through understanding their differences, we're able to provide a unique curriculum catered for their specific needs. And it really is specifically to the child. So before actually personalising and customising specific curriculum, we take into account the children's differences, which is their language, their religion, their age, their proficiency stage, and also their emotional and social well-being, because some of them are obviously brought up in different backgrounds, different home lives. And we also take into account the schooling or the none of the no, no schooling in, in too many cases. So by identifying all the differences, we can actually provide a curriculum that's catered personally for the children. So, you know, this allows us to actually see what life experiences and school experience the children have missed due to their culture or their lifestyle or even their language barrier. So this enables us to you know, provide the children with these valuable experiences, which in turn promotes the high expectations. Okay. Um, and you, you you do accept visitors, don't you? What was that? Sorry, I broke up then. <laughs> You're happy to help have visitors come and oh, see. Oh, no, yes, too. yes, we always yeah. have visitors. I yeah. always welcome people into the, into the school because it's, yeah. it's something that you've got to see. It's, it's hard, like, you know, explaining what you do on a piece of paper or, you know, or jotting it down as, as a map. But so the best way for you to see how it actually works is for you to come in and actually feel the buzz within the room and feel that excitement of the children and see that they want to learn and how it's differentiated for all the different aspects of the children. Because even though they might be the same proficiency stage, their background in their upbringing, you know, will alter, you know, how they learn and, and what they need to learn. So it's important we know everything we need to about their backgrounds and where they want to go so we can actually provide those experiences for them. Without those experiences, they've got nothing to talk about and nothing to write about even something as simple as going to the shops. So I start off, at, uh, you know, a unit of work where we look at formal language and we actually go to the shops. The children, you know, have to ask to buy ingredients. We then follow instructions to cook something. So everything is a real life experience. It's not just, oh, we're just going to go to Drayton Manor and go on in the rides. These are actual real life experiences that children have missed out on because of their culture and because of their lifestyle of 
hopping from one country to another, one school to another, coming to school, not coming to school. So we enable them to give them these experiences. And this in turn actually gives us the high expectations and the remarkable work from happy and very proud children. Yeah, they were remarkably happy, and they just yes. said, thank you very much for that, Sarah. Um,